Waycross presents an election forum. For Forest Park City Council, there are nine candidates running for four seats. They are, in alphabetical order, Sheila J. Cottle, Diana Herbie, Charles Johnson, Ronald E. Johnson, Christine L. Merritt, Roslyn Moore, Chelsea Nuss, Matthew J. Robinson, and Sharon Renee Watts. Good evening, and welcome to our Waycross Election Forum, this being for Forest Park City Council. As you've seen at the beginning of our opening, that there are a number of individuals running for these seats. We will be doing a two-part introduction here tonight. Our first is with the first five candidates alphabetically. I'm very fortunate to have all five of them seated with me tonight. They are Sheila Cottle, Diana Herbie, Charles Johnson, Ronald Johnson, and Christine Merritt. Thank you for joining us this evening. In a few moments, I will be opening the phone lines and emails to you, the viewing audience at home, after our, our candidates here give a two-minute opening statement. Once the, the candidates have given their statements, we will open the phone lines and emails and questions from myself to the candidates as we go through for Forest Park City Council. So to begin, I will start with Sheila Cottle for a two-minute opening statement. I would like to thank Waycross Community Media for the opportunity to speak to my dear fellow Forest Park neighbors. My name is Sheila Cottle, and I'm honored to serve you as your Forest Park City Council member for the past three terms and a second vice mayor. I'm running for re-election to the Forest Park Council. The three areas I'd want to share with you fall under the umbrella of keeping and improving our quality of life, protect our community values, maintain a safe and family-oriented community, partnership with Forest Park community, government, businesses, and the Winton Woods School District in order to guarantee successful outcomes for all of our children who are students in the community. I've been a resident for 44 years. I've been a business owner for 37. I'm family-oriented, privileged to be married to my husband, Barry, for 46 years, and we raised our two sons, BJ and Stephen Cottle, who both graduated from Winton Woods City Schools. I have the following background to help me prepare for this. Um, I, I've been a registered nurse for 46 years. I graduated from Capital University. I'm currently a member of the Forest Park Chamber of Commerce, where I was previously served as a board member. I volunteer on the Forest Park Community Patrol, and I've had the privilege to serve as a volunteer with the Winton Woods City School District as past PTA president, board member, and room parent. I have served as a board member and past president of local and state professional organizations. I would like to thank my fellow council members and the late member, council member <coughs> Charles Lee Southall, Jr., for their service as council members. I encourage each of you to take this opportunity that we're privileged to have in the United States of America, which is to cast your vote on November 7th. I ask for your vote on November 7th in order to serve you as your Forest Park City Council member. Thank you and have a good evening. Diana Herbie. Yes, Ten. my name is Diana Herbie, and I am running this fall for re-election to the Forest Park City Council. As in the past, I'm running with a slate of candidates, which includes, in addition to myself, the current mayor, Charles Johnson, recently appointed council member and longtime Parks and Recreation volunteer, Rosalind Moore, a newcomer, 31-year resident and Dayton uh, business owner, Ronald E. Johnson. Also running with us is uh, our current first vice mayor, Wendell Burns, who is running as a write-in candidate for the unexpired term, which was created with the passage of our colleague, uh, Charles Southall. I think this ticket provides the city during a time of transition with both experience and proven leadership, as well as with some fresh perspectives. We're running on a plank and platform that consists of five points. One of those is to continue to preserve the financial stability of the city. The second is to continue to support our public safety departments. Third is to assist our economic development program with uh, business retention and recruitment. Also, we're interested in preserving Forest Park's uh, history of diversity, all of which leads to a quality of life. I thank you so much for your past support and would urge November 7th that you support our slate. Thank you. Wonderful. Mr. Johnson, the first. <laughs> your two minutes begins when you're ready. Good evening. My name is Charles Johnson. I am currently a member of the Forest Park City Council. I have served on the City Council longer than any city council, any person in the city of Forest Park. 
I'm also currently the mayor of the city of Forest Park, uh, having been duly elected by other members of our council. I'm running for re-election to the city of Forest Park City Council because there's work yet to be done. We've made a lot of strides and we've done well over the years, but there's still a lot of things that needs to be done. Uh, first and foremost, obviously, we have just selected a new city manager, uh, and that transition period uh, is going to need to be stable. I believe that I can bring some experience to that and help, uh, help him to develop into the type of city manager that we know he will. Uh, the purpose of my candidacy also is to continue to serve the citizens of Forest Park. Forest Park is a great place to live. It's still safe to take walks at night. It's still safe to go into our parks. Uh, we're, no, we're not immune from uh, a lot of the bad things in society, just as no other community is immune. However, we will continue to strive to make things better for our city and for our citizens. It's very important that as a council person you understand you're not there for you, you're there for the people. And it's the people that you have to always keep first and foremost in mind when you're making decisions. All of those decisions are not going to be easy ones, but if you always think what's best for the city as a whole, you can't go wrong. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. And to the next Mr. Johnson, your two minutes when you're ready to begin. My name is Ron Johnson. I've been a resident of Forest Park since 1986. I have four kids that uh, graduated from the Winton Woods School District. My niece, Chandra, was graduated from the first class that went all the way through. My daughter, Amora, and then Anicia and Lance. Uh, I have married my college sweetheart. Uh, we've been together for 38 years. We've been married for 34 years. That's Dr. Viola Johnson, who's on the school board. I own my own business. It is called Express Employment Professional. We're a staffing agency. Uh, out of 700 offices this past week, we were rated in the top 200. And we broke a new record. We had um, ended up putting about 300 associates to work and various business through the South Dayton area. I also did some things in the community. I coached uh, the basketball at the junior high at Wynwood's High School ninth grade girls basketball team. Just a side note of trivia, I have a record that will probably never be broken. My freshman girls beat a team 36 to nothing. I don't know if that record will be broken, but just the sidebar. I'm um, also the assistant pastor at my, my church. I think one of the things that I'll bring to that, that's going to be an open mind, and that is the willingness to do more listening instead of telling people what they, they want. Listen to see what they actually have. I've been in business for about 34 years, and so I'm good with fiscal responsibility, balancing budget. One of the keys that I do is really good at managing people, resources, and also managing people. I think we'll bring a fresh perspective and just try to build on what this, this team has already done. So I would just say on November 7th, please consider voting for me as your city council person. Wonderful. And Ms. Merritt, the final two minutes to you. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Christine Merritt, and I am running for the Office of City Council in Forest Park. I would first like to give you some background information on myself and then provide my qualifications and City Council goals. Um, I have lived in Forest Park for approximately 17 years. Um, I came from a very small town, um, approximately 100 miles east of Columbus, and a very, very small community. Uh, in October of 2016, I retired from Fifth Third Bank, where I worked for seven years in consumer lending. My primary responsibilities were to assist those who were trying to prevent foreclosure on their homes, are in foreclosure, or trying to get out of foreclosure. Additionally, I worked at the IRS as a revenue agent, where I performed audits on tax returns. Also, I was a cash accountant at General Revenue Corporation. And at Lowe's and Myers, I was uh, served as uh, department managers. I, also, I even was a corrections officer at BECI. So I feel I have a very well-rounded um, <coughs> resume for um, different types of jobs. My education includes a bachelor's degree in business administration 
where I graduated summa cum laude from Ohio University, and also a certificate in accounting from Cincinnati State College. If elected to city council at Forest Park, three personal goals are, I would like to accomplish include the following. I would like to see a community center, community recreation center uh, open to serve the um, residents of Forest Park. I would also uh, like to make... That was two minutes, Ms. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, we've now made it to the end of our opening statements, and that means it's time for you, the voting audience at home. If you're watching us on September 27th, please join in. That's why we do these live. 825-3971 is our phone number. Live at waycross.org is the email. You can ask any question you would like. Just make sure there are a few rules of the road. When you are calling in or you're sending an email, let us know what part of town you are. Make sure it is the city of Forest Park because this is important to the city. Also, make sure that it is an open for question to all candidates. Do not ask pointed questions. And with that, I will start off with the first questions going to Ms. Herbie. Starting with you, a two minute answer to this. Obviously, we've heard a lot of things going on in the city, but what do you feel are the top three issues that are affecting the city at currently? Um, I think, first and foremost, as Mr. Um, Johnson mentioned, and as I kind of alluded to, is we are undergoing a transition in leadership at the city management level. Um, we also know that probably over the next year to two years, there are going to be some other significant uh, departures in staff. And so uh, I, I think that one of the things is helping the city during that transition. The second thing is always important to me because without having financial stability in the city, you can't do anything else. And so that's one of the things is sitting on the Ways and Means Committee and chairing the Ways and Means Committee that I have a great deal of background and experience in understanding. And so um, I'm watching cautiously. We're, we're seeing some uh, improvement in our income, not nearly as much as surrounding communities, and we're being very cautious about that in terms of how we deal with that, how we expend that, where we put that. And then probably the other thing that's very important is uh, our, our roads and sidewalk program, which we've had to really delay because of the downturn in the economy. I'm working very hard to see that we bring that back to where we have had it. Mr. Johnson, same question to you. Yes. Uh, obviously, as uh, was just stated, in order for any city to be able to do the kinds of things that it needs to do, it must uh, be able to fund those things. It also must have the uh, <clears throat> support of its citizens. Uh, we are going through a period of transition, uh, as uh, was stated, not just at the level of the city manager, but throughout our, our staff, especially over the next, next two or three years. One of the things that we've always managed to do, thanks in large part to our current city manager, is uh, managing people. That is, preparing the next person who's going to move into the next position. We have to continue down that road. Personally, my thought, is all, as always has been, is to promote from within when within is the better choice. And fortunately, we've always had that as the better choice. As far as economic development is concerned, we, all, we would all like to bring in new and additional businesses, but just as importantly, we have to make sure that we retain those businesses that we now have. And in order to do that, we have to make sure that we're, we are a good business partner. And being a good business partner means supporting those businesses when they need our support and being there for them and have no, knowing that they're going to be there for us. And finally, uh, working in partnership with all agencies in the city, whether they are businesses or the schools or our churches or our individual citizens, we have to listen. We have to be available to them. And then we have to hold ourselves accountable. Okay. Mr. Johnson? I would like to say um, fiscal responsibility. Even if you have economic growth and you have those other things, if the community, 
the, or the people from the outside don't view us as being fiscally responsible, you're less likely to want to put your, your business here. So just want to emphasize that we're a solid community. Uh, we have a, a, a plan that is going to make sure that we're solvent. And so that we want to just say that for anybody that's looking about coming to Forest Park, you can feel comfortable that not only is this a community that is fiscally sound, we also have public safety. Again, just to reiterate what Mr. Johnson is saying, this is a place that if you were to bring your business or your family, you can feel safe that your car won't be broken into. And they're just things that just sort of makes it nice. And then I think the other thing that people are looking for is something called quality of life. What is it like to live here? What are some of the things that makes this thing really special? I know I've lived here since 86. Most of my neighbors, we've been here together for about, about 20 years. And so we actually bring that, that family, community, if you were to come and move here, not only do you have the experience of the past, blend it with the new people that are moving in, but you also have a really high quality neighborhood, uh, close to the highway, close to businesses, close to restaurants, all the things that sort of add to it. And the different things they're doing at the high school and, and the school system, I think, also makes this even uh, uh, just a great community for people to actually come and live. Wonderful. Ms. Merritt, same question to you as well. Okay. Um, well, I believe that the first thing uh, would be the just making sure that the fiscal efficiency, that, that the, um, the monitoring of the budget, is it, it, the, the monies that are distributed is done efficiently and you get the most out of the money that you are spending. Um, so, and I would also, I also see that um, I'd, I haven't seen like a five-year plan for the city. I, I um, recently looked on the um, online and found I found prior years, but I didn't see anything projected beyond one year. So I think the city has to look into the future a little bit farther and more in depth in order to plan, in order to keep up with the future needs of the city. And then the final thing that I think is, is a real problem is the streets and the sidewalks and also the trees. The, the city of Forest Park is known for its trees and um, with the um, problem of the Emerald Ash Borer and having to cut down all the trees, that's been a real strain on the city's budget. So I think I would uh, re research that and to see if there's anything that could be done to make, um, make possible the planting of trees in order to replace them. Because as of right now, that's not been a possibility. So I would try to help restore some of the, the neighborhoods with the trees and improve the sidewalks and roads. And Sheila, you'll be... Uh... Um, continue to grow our businesses. Mr. Brim, our economic development director, does an excellent job with the development of new companies and retaining our current companies and the fiscal responsibility within our budget for our city, for our residents. All right. Next question, starting with Mr. Johnson. Uh, one minute to answer. Um, a lot of people have already mentioned, especially the, the incumbents, about transition. What is going to make that, obviously it's going to be a difficult thing for council to do because of the strong backing that we've had in the past. How do you as council members prepare the city for an ease of transition so that they feel at ease when they come to you? Starting with Mr. Johnson again for one minute. I think that's already been in progress and that has been in progress for quite some time now. As I mentioned before, one of the things that, that we've always done is we always have that number two and number three person in a department or in a position who's learning, who is basically ready to move into that top position when that position comes over. It becomes that domino effect. But you get to that point by being, by being very prudent in terms of who you're hiring and what their qualifications are and what they can do but more importantly, how do they fit within the city of Forest Park? Not everybody fits in Forest Park. Uh, when Ray Hodges came, for an example, Ray Hodges was a good fit from the beginning. When uh, Phil Cannon moved into the police, police department, he was a good fit for the city. So what we're doing, we will continue to do to provide people that we know can do the job and get that job done. 
Mr. Johnson, same question to you as well. I would say, coming from the business community, looking from the outside in, one of the keys is something called try to over-communicate. Over-communicate says that we're going to emphasize all the things that we're doing well. We'll also, also bring forth some of the things that we can improve on. But the more you communicate with your community, the more information you, you can give them to show them that this is what we have planned. This is the direction we're going to go in. This is how we're going to uh, attempt to do it. And so you actually want to get it so that the community is aware of where you're going to try to take them to and then also provide ways for them to also give input. The real key is that if we try to manage from the top down and not from the bottom up, that's the residents up, what do they desire? Well, part of that transition is to give them that comfort that if you feel really uncomfortable about some things that you have access to this council, we're going to listen to you and as much as we can, we will try to facilitate your needs. Ms. Merritt, same question to you as well. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, I would have to echo what Mr. Ronald Johnson just said about keeping the people informed and having some input so that you have um, a, a, an idea of what the whole community is, um, that what they would like and what they desire. And then that, help, that helps keep everybody informed and working as a whole unit in order to, to keep and maintain people. Ms. Cottle, two minutes. I'm pleased, minute that two. Our, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm pleased that our new city manager, Ty Smith, will transition us um, in this next year. Um, as you look at his excellent background, his human resources skill, his working with departments, um, his budget, and his fiscal responsibility, I think all of those things will help us in our transition with our city. Okay. And Ms. Herbie? Um, yes, as uh, Mr. Johnson, Mayor Johnson, had said in the past, we have a, a real history of promoting from within. And we've had past promotions that uh, from within in the police department, the fire department, we're doing essentially the same thing with the city manager because Mr. Smith has been our assistant city manager as well as director of human resources. And so we've managed to really transition our uh, management without really missing a beat. Um, but one of the things not mentioned is that um, the team that we've put together is a balance of current experience with new ideas. And that, that smooth transition of people on council, I think, will also help. And so that's why I think, feel very strongly about um, looking at our team as a very viable help in this transition time. We are halfway through this portion. There is a secondary portion coming soon uh, within the next few minutes. However, if you'd like to get questions into this panel right now, 825-3971 if you are joining us on September 27th. 825-3971 uh, or live at waycross.org is the email. The next question coming up for Mr. Johnson, Ronald Johnson here. Uh, you had mentioned in regards to your idea of over-communicate, get the message out. Let, which brings into my mind community engagement. How do you, as council, stay engaged with the residents of Forest Park? One minute for your response, please. One of the things that we're really sort of fortunate to have is this new thing called mass media. So you have Facebook, you have all the different technologies out there. There are ways for us to communicate. To, I'm an older gentleman. We used to only have the newspaper, the radio. But now there's so many different avenues that we have that we can communicate that information to the voters, to the, to the public. Uh, again, us just going and taking advantage of the, the social media that, that's out there now. Just really, uh, so for my, my director of business, I get a lot of uh, people to come from Facebook. That is just somebody putting an ad on, somebody liking the ad, somebody else liking it. So a lot of it comes from something called referral. And the other one comes from word of mouth. And so I think there's a way for us to go in and take advantage of the social media and still do some of the, the traditional mailing, still put it in the, the newspaper. I, I still read the newspaper. So there, there's still some of us who still like that, that old media. So that, that's what I would definitely suggest. Okay. Ms. Merritt, same question to you, community you. engagement. Um, I, I would also um, feel strongly about, for instance, what we're doing right now. You make available on um, as a public forum, maybe do this maybe once or twice uh, every couple months. Um, let people know and let them call in regularly if, if that isn't already being done. I'm not aware of that if it is. <laughs> but, um, and then 
also just get out and talk to people in, at the, in the community. I think that just make yourself available. Go talk to people face to face. I know that everybody does social media, but I think there's nothing wrong with going to all these different meetings and social events and really talking with people. Ms. Cottle, a minute for you. Um, I'm honored to be the city council member that's working with the We Thrive program. We've come a long way. We've looked at all of the statistics medically. Um, I appreciate working with our assistant fire chief, Jermaine Hill, and we've been able to in institute uh, goals of safety. We're looking at sidewalk repairs and changes with the street. And it's been an honor to be a part of that and will continue to be a part of that team. Ms. Herbie? Um, yes, I, I agree that uh, one of the best ways is face to face. And I think in many instances, probably all of us on this, this panel and probably on the panel to come, have connections within the community through various organiza organizations. I'm a, a past president of the Forest Park Women's Club, current treasurer. I have many friends that uh, from Forest Park on that. I'm in the F Democratic Club. Um, there are many connections that we can make just through the things that we are a, a, a involved in in the city. But we always have an open door policy to listen to residents um, through our e-news. Uh, uh, forum and you, you can pick up many interesting things from that and also we always uh, all of our meetings are open for people to come and, and talk to us uh, all the committees and commission meetings are open so people are very very welcome to come in thank you okay. and mr. Johnson you'll end this question uh, communicating with the public uh, as, as has been said it can take many forms but I think the one that I use most is face-to-face I am constantly out in the public. I go to all, all kinds of events. I go to barber shops. I go to beauty shops. I go to little league games. I go to the uh, senior. I, I go to the senior center for, for the dancers for their games. Uh, I talk to people when I'm at uh, at the store at Kroger. Uh, I go around the community, uh, different streets. I, I've been all over Forest Park. Uh, talking to people. The one, the one advantage to face-to-face -to -face is there's an immediate in, interaction and people can ask follow-up questions. People can bring, can tell you all of the things that they have concerned about and you can give them responses to those things. So it's very important that not only do we give out information, but that we listen to those things that people have to say. And the best way to do that is face-to-face. All right, this will be the last question that I ask before we go to closing statements, and I'm going to ask this of Ms. Merritt, quite a minute to you. Um, a lot of people have mentioned throughout their opening statements, one of the things to look is obviously economic development. I know it's a tough question to answer in the uh, one minute in the last part of the time. <laughs> However, what do you see is the key goal in creating a sustainable economic development within the city of Forest Park currently? Um, I would say the key, the key point in sustaining it is to do everything to entice businesses to stay with Forest Park in Forest Park. Um, also, um, I know that we can offer some tax incentives, but you don't want to offer, that's kind of like a double-edged sword. You don't want to offer too much tax incentives because then you don't um, gain anything from the business being there other than um, you do, there would be jobs available. So um, to keep the businesses in the town, um, I just think is, is the main thing. Of re it, it, just to retain the businesses we have and then to um, globally just go, um, sorry, I'm searching for a word here. Um, okay. That, that's fine. I'll just stop there. Okay. <laughs> Ms. Cottle, same question to you. Um, I think it's important as I serve on community patrol, I'm active with the Forest Park Senior Center as a member and <clears throat> volunteer at the Day Spring Church of God is important. Safety is paramount. I serve as a council member liaison to public safety. We need to continue to work with the police and fire department and increase the funding to our police and fire department. Um, yes, um, I serve as the liaison to the Economic Development Commission, and so I know that there is already a very strong <coughs> bond between our businesses and our Economic Development Director. Uh, people really enjoy working in Forest Park. 
the businesses really enjoy being here. If we lose them, it's primarily because we don't have the square footage for them to expand or move into. And that's the primary reason why we've lost some. But we've been very good at recruitment. And we've done a great deal uh, in terms of targeting incentives that we really get paid back within a year to two years. I would continue to do that. Um, we don't have a big marketing department. We rely on other organizations to work with us, uh, county and state and national organizations, to work with us. And we do a lot of recruitment through those organizations. And so I continue to do what we're doing, because we're doing very well. Mr. Johnson, same question to you as well. Yes, uh, obviously, uh, we're very proud of our economic development department and of the, uh, uh, and it, its uh, director. Retention of businesses is very, very important. When the country was going through the economic downturn, we were able to con we were able to keep most of our businesses in Forest Park. As has been said, when we lose businesses, it's not because people want to get out of Forest Park. We don't have the space. And what we do in terms of making up for space we don't have, we are very precise in the types of businesses that we're looking at. One of the things you have to keep in mind when you're doing when you're bringing in businesses, you also got to look at the number of people that's going to be working there and the income level that those, of, of those people. So you have to maximize that. You know, we could have a hundred businesses where the the medium in, medium hourly wage is, is six dollars, but you could have one where there are six people and they're all making two hundred thousand dollars. So we target, and we've we've been very very successful at that. And Mr. Johnson, you'll be ending off this question. Economic development. I think one of the keys you have to accentuate, what are the, some of the advantages are actually coming to Forest Park? First, it's easeability. We're about five minutes off the highway. The next thing you're going to look at and say, if I am a potential person, what does the labor market look like? How many people that are in working age live within this community? Based on that, you're going to say you have a community that, that is safe. We have ease of uh, accessibility. In the event that the associates want to go out for lunch, you have ease of the restaurant. And then the other thing you're, you're going to look at, if I'm a potential person coming to this, this community, it just says, do, are we going to be able to actually grow our business, and we know we're going to max out someplace, but if you just want to go and just sort of say, we call it like the Disney effects in business, we're going to give you good customer service, if you've ever been to Disney, to try to make, we're going to give you good customer service, you're going to be safe, you're going to let you grow to the max that we can, and that I think that all of those things would give incentive for people to come, word of mouth, and invest more into our communities. Wonderful. That unfortunately ends our time with you on answering these questions. However, I do want to give everyone the opportunity to have a one-minute closing statement. I'm going to start with Ms. Merritt, and we're going to go backwards uh, so that everybody has the opportunity. Ms. Merritt, a one-minute closing statement. All right, you. thank you. Um, for my closing statement, I would like to say, first of all, um, being a, a first-time run, running um, candidate for the Office of City Park, or sorry, City Council for Forest Park. Um, I know I may not come, come across as well informed as some of the current incumbent uh, people that have been here for like 12 years or longer, um, but I do think that um, every, every situation needs a set of fresh eyes and new ideas. And I think that that is what, what would be gained by electing a new person to the uh, city Council. So, and I, I feel very capable with my background, my education. I may not came, come across too good on this forum, but um, I do, I would make a very good candidate as, as you've heard from all of my experiences and education. Thank you. Mr. Johnson. I would just like to say I think our team, we bring a proven leadership, and we also bring a fresh perspective. So we get a chance to get a combination of the experience of those people that are already in office, and then those of us who are coming to office with an open mind. Probably one of the things that I learned when my wife ran for the school board, all the things that you think you know, you don't know them. So it's better to come into that position open, ready to learn, willing to work with other people, and being able, most importantly, to provide that teamwork that is going to affect positive change and to promote what we've already have going on and build upon that foundation. Nothing would be worse than trying to get people in to destroy the foundation, to start it over again. My thing is when I get in office, let's build on that foundation. And let's take that. I love Forest Park. 
I, even if I don't get on board, I still love Forest Park. But I think if we build on that foundation, we'll continue the success. And this will be, again, one of the great communities in Cincinnati, Ohio area. Mr. Johnson, one yes, minute. I would just simply say that um, I have served Forest Park. I would like to continue to serve Forest Park. As I said before, a great part of being a city council member is to be able to listen and to be able to hear what people are asking, hear what they're saying, and once you've heard it, you have to be honest, you have to tell them the truth, even with they, when they, you know they want another answer. Give them the truth, they, truth they understand. Secondly, we have a council management form of government, city manager form of government, uh, and that means city council is there to legislate. We're not there to micromanage. One of the keys has been, as has been said is if you hire the right people, and you're sure you hire the right people, get out of the way, let them do their jobs, don't hinder them, support them. All too often we have situations where people want to do things that they shouldn't be doing. You've, you've hired good people, let the good people do their job, and you assist them. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, I'm a 32-year resident of Forest Park. My family has had a, a relationship and lived in Forest Park since 1963. I'm very passionate about living in Forest Park and serving the residents. I've been on council 12 years. In that 12 years, I've chaired or served on nearly every committee of council, and I've been liaison to nearly every commission and board of council. So I have a, a broad background of knowledge about all the aspects of city government, and I think I bring that and my passion to serve the citizens of Forest Park. Ms. Cottle, you'll be the ending our closing statements. All right, thank you. Thank you for your time this evening. I'm pleased to be a resident in our diverse community. I encourage each of you to take the opportunity on Tuesday, November 7th, to cast your vote um, at that time. I would ask for your vote on November 7th so I can continue to be a part of our community, a part of our family, uh, and a part of city, city council. Thank you and have a good evening. Wonderful. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us on this first portion of the Forest Park Council. Like I said, there is a number of individuals, nine in total, who are running this evening for this the seat in the city of Forest Park. We're going to take a small recess. We'll be back within, at 7.15, where we will be joined by the next guest of candidates, where we will continue the Forest Park City Council Waycross Election Forum. I apologize, and we'll see you just in a moment. Hi, I am Jason Grzgorek, and I'd like to welcome you once again back to the Waycross Election Forum, this for Forest Park City Council. I would, at our DS now, we have the remaining of the nine candidates. As you will see, there are only two. We have Rosalind Moore and Chelsea Nuss joining Good us evening. this evening. Glad that you could join us. Mr. Robinson had been sent a certified letter and returned that letter, but unfortunately was unable to attend this evening. Sharon Watts, same thing as well. However, she did supply us with a two-minute opening statement, which we will be airing this evening. So without further ado, just like we did in the last segment, I will start with our two-minute opening statements to Ms. Moore. Ms. Moore, two minutes to you. Good evening. Hi, I'm Rosalind Moore, and I've lived in Forest Park for over 24 years. I'm married with two children. Uh, my children graduated from Whitten Woods High School in 2013 and 2016. Um, I love serving the community of Forest Park. Um, I am a um, retired Army major. Um, I, I did 20 years uh, of service uh, serving our country. And um, I love volunteering. I'm a registered nurse, and I volunteer um, on the Park and Recreation Commission. I am the vice chair of that committee for the city of Forest Park. Um, I do various, various activities throughout the city. Um, I implement a brotherhood program for teens. Um, also, I'm very active in the school district. Uh, my children, of course, attended there. And so a lot of programming, fundraising, and um, advocacy for the school district. And um, I'm very um, concerned about health and wellness, and I sit on the We Thrive Committee, um, which is a community um, health initiative through the um, City of Forest Park with the, um, in collaboration with the Fire uh, Department. And um, so I'm very excited to um, be uh, newly appointed to City Council in July, and so I'm excited to get started and bring fresh new ideas and initiatives for the residents of Forest Park. Thank you. Wonderful. Ms. Nuss, two minutes to you as well. 
Thank you, Jason, and thank you for having us this evening. Hi, my name is Chelsea Nuss. Uh, I am a proud mother of two young children and proud resident of Forest Park. You know, I see the greatness uh, and the promise of our neighborhoods, our family opportunities, a responsive government for thriving businesses and safe environments. But in order to do that, we do need fresh and innovative leadership. Uh, as a single mother, a business owner, and community leader, I can bring a fresh perspective to the Forest Park City Council and deliver on what Forest Park needs most, like sustainable economic development, family opportunities, quality of life, a responsive and transparent government. Our city's slogan is position for progress. I will bring fresh ideas, new perspectives, and a sense of urgency and leadership to progress and actually compete for the opportunities that Hamilton County has. I believe we can do this if we work together, and I certainly believe that I'm the best candidate for this position because of the history that I have and the public service work that I've done. As I said, I am a business owner, a dossier for parents, an educational services uh, company that provides STEM learning uh, to various, uh, uh, various organizations, children's families. Um, my background, I graduated from Miami University, Oxford with a degree in uh, political science and business. I have my advanced certification in business administration and economics from the University of Notre Dame. I sit as the current vice chairman for the Economic Development Commission of Forest Park. I'm also the board, uh, a board director for the Environmental Awareness Board of Forest Park. I am the webmaster for the Historical Society of Forest Park. Uh, I've been a long-term member of the Winton Woods PTA, and I'm the former secretary and president of the Winton Woods PTA. Uh, I'm also on the Democratic Club uh, and um, also the Forest Park Women's Club. So all these things help. I ask for your vote on November 7th. My name is Chelsea Nuss. And with that, I close those statements, but I do have one more. As I stated earlier, Ms. Sharon Watts did give us an opportunity to record a two-minute opening statement, and we're able to give that to you now. Hi, my name is Sharon Watts, and I am running for city council. Before I lived here, I lived at the Gabbard Point Apartments in Finneytown. I'm a single mother, and I raised my son in the Finneytown School Districts. My son was involved in uh, gun violence with a friend, a classmate. And then so caused for him to regress. I wanted to do something to bring life back into his life. So I wondered what could I do just to uh, keep him busy for the summer. So I contacted the Citizens Committee on Youth, the CCY program. In doing so, they were eager to help with applications. So I asked if they would come to our complex for a summer job fair. I contacted the Wiz radio station. They came out, and kids came from everywhere, near and far. It was a great experience for me. And I, at that time, gave birth to the OTART Operation Target At-Risk Teens Summer Youth Employment Program. This program was designed to reroute our youth for a positive change due to, due to the gun violence in our communities. I know there are other issues that we need to be concerned about, and I guess that's why my passion is for our young people. I will address issues as they come, but I also want to remember our young people that is facing this gun violence in our communities. We would like to reroute them for a positive change. And the only way we could do that is if we get your vote come November the 7th. My name is Sharon Watts. And I look for you at the polls on November the 7th. Sharon, for coming in to take care of that since she cannot be with us this evening. That means it's now up to you, the voting audience at home, to join in and participate. If you are watching us on September 27th, please give us a phone call, 825-3971, or shoot us an email, live at waycross.org. A couple easy rules to follow. If you are phoning or emailing, make sure that it is an open question to all candidates, and let us know what part of town. Make sure it is the city of Forest Park, because it is rather important, considering it is the Forest Park City Council. 
In that, I'm going to start with our first question to Ms. Nuss. One of the items that you had made mention and has been alluded to in our previous statements has been recreation and what is important to our youth. Ms. Uh, Ms. Watts, yourself, Ms. Moore, I know, have, have made comment of this. What can we do recreationally for all residents of the city of Forest Park? And that's um, two minutes for you. Thank you. Uh, that's an excellent question. So part of my platform is about community involvement and creating family opportunities, and that includes family spaces. Um, at this time, we have parks and, of course, a recreational um, unit team department that does a lot of um, a lot of outdoor uh, activities and we've been able to partner with some surrounding areas in a reimbursement program um, where at least our residents can experience um, you know certain activities at the YMCA as memberships and, and elsewhere and then get reimbursed for that uh, the problem though is that it, it's simply not enough um, for our growing populace so we're now at uh, approaching 19,000 um, folks and that's the constant concern that I hear from families is where are our children going? The, ch the places that our children need to go uh, have to be safe. Um, so as a, um, as a candidate and uh, hopefully a newcomer to Forest Park City Council, that would be my first priority in investigating how is it that we can bring a community rec uh, recreation center or activity center because our children, quite frankly, need it. Um, we are seeing a slight escalation in certain juvenile crimes. A lot Now, although a lot of them are through passersby, we know that recreation and having enrichment opportunities after school that support the community and the school district are going to help overall for the, uh, the quality of life that we have here. And um, as a mother with two children uh, and actually the only person uh, on council that has children or, or to be on council that has children so young it's extraordinarily important so um, making sure that if we are going to have to pay uh, such a high tax threshold here in Forest Park then you know um, some of our services need to to um, make sure that we're we feel as though that we're getting our dollars worth and so that may be some partnerships with other um, with other municipalities um, that the outdoor space that needs to um, kind of be revamped and, and um, new benches, more benches, make it more family style so that people feel more comfortable and want to be outside. Great. Ms. Moore, same question to you. Um, definitely, I think our community need a common space for the residents of Forest Park. I've been very active in the community. As I mentioned earlier, I was part. I am part of We Thrive, which is looking at chronic disease in the city of Forest Park. So we've seen the statistics regarding um, disease, the diseases in the city of Forest Park. Uh, the We Thrive program, um, I was part of the committee that we wrote a $15,000 grant through Interact for Health, and that grant uh, can lead us up to $40,000. Um, so um, I do recognize that. Um, I also sit on the Park and Recreation Commission, and we are um, in the process of buying new equipment at Central Park, uh, brand new equipment for playgrounds, and we have a rotating cycle and where we uh, buy uh, update and new equipment for um, the parks in Forest Park. Forest Park has wonderful parks. We have beautiful soccer fields. My children play soccer. My husband coached soccer. Um, and we have wonderful softball fields. And we just built a brand new tennis um, facility for the residents of Forest Park. And then also we implement a, a tennis program. So we are looking at that. And I've been very active in finding funding and also my time. I spent countless hours volunteering in the committee to make sure that our families are active, our children are safe, because children make up 15% of our population from 10 to 19. So um, we do have to do more to make sure that we identify those programs and I implemented a brotherhood program because I understood that young men need more mentoring. Um, and that was a program for uh, middle school through um, for middle school young men, and so uh, I do recognize that and have very been active in implementing programs to um, move us forward. Thank Great. you. Next question. Uh, it was touched on just a little bit on our past forum, but it has also been touched on here as well. You're talking about children, you're talking about quality of life, you're talking about safety. Mm -hmm. What are the, obviously we've heard that Forest Park is a very safe place to be, but it can be a safer place. Mm -hmm. What as, count, as a council member can you do to help ensure the safety of our residents? Uh, Starting okay. with you, Ms. Moore. Well, public safety and public health is my passion. I'm a registered nurse. I'm a public nurse, public health nurse. So um, part of the We Thrive Committee is we're looking at that. Our committee came together and we realized that some of our, our parks 
um, not some of our walkways and our uh, sidewalks aren't safe. And so we put together a committee and they went around and they looked at all of the um, uh, sidewalks and reported the locations. Uh, and so, um, of course, safety, um, we have an excellent police department. And um, so we are uh, in fire department. So we're looking at what is uh, putting things in place to make sure that um, our residents continue to stay safe. Ms. Nuss, same question. Um, yeah, and that's a good question. Um, so we did have block watch some time ago, and um, you know, even my child, uh, we were driving. Uh, I live in the H section, and we were driving. The, and my son says, "You know, mom, is that uh, that block watch? That means that it's safer in our neighborhood, right?" And unfortunately, I had to tell him, "Well, it's it's kind of been disbanded, and what I can ascertain is it has uh, formed into the community uh, patrol, and it's a great program. Um, it's led by local officers, and like she said, our uh, office, our police officers are." fire uh, they are really really amazing um, the challenges is getting that information and time when to meet making sure that it's conducive for residents um, what things are there that are going to attract them to want to come to that meeting because there's excellent uh, information that comes out of it and I attend those meetings um, one way uh, that we can make our uh, community safer is also with lighting so you have a lot of um, locations that are near the parks or in residences or, or in neighborhoods rather and the lighting is out either the lighting is out or it's very dim and if you have a couple of those posts right by one another that are that are out that creates a safety concern um, on our street specifically we have a speeding problem you have a lot of folks that are trans or, uh, coming through uh, small park pockets and neighborhoods like Smi uh, on Smiley and Holderness and whatnot you know to kind of get to Walmart well it, 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 it creates a, a, a safety hazard so much so that my the uh, neighbor, the neighbors uh, on our street, we got to talking about, and I said, well, okay, well, we're going to do something about this. So I went before council and said, hey, listen, this is a serious safety concern. Um, we have over 20-some children in just a single um, block and a half. And so, heaven forbid something happened to them, what can we do? So they did react immediately, which was great. They put out a, um, a speed radar, and that did help minimize the, the speeding. But other things need to be done, or there's going to be some, some tragic consequences, um, possibly stop signs, things like that. Okay. Ms. Nuss, you brought up a very good point, and we've talked about this in the past uh, forum here a minute ago. It's about community engagement. You just made mention of it and how to bring people together. You want, to under, want people to understand what's going on. As a council member and being a liaison to the people, how will you be engaged within, the, uh, within your, with your residents? Uh, well, I have a pretty extensive background in community engagement and involvement, so much so that uh, with the company I have, Dosier, uh, that's actually how, how we began, working with schools and putting on uh, community involvement programs. And we were quite successful and have been, uh, still are with that. Um, so what you have to do, one, is make personal connections with people. So when you are out as a public official, a public servant, that you are engaging with people, listening much more than you are talking to their needs and their concerns. Um, I don't think that we are using technology to the best of our ability. And some of that's just tough because of capacity and there's so many other things to do. So what ways can we maybe partner? We've got the, 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 uh, we have our school district, um, this high school right next door. There are plenty of students that want to enter into media blogging and technology and things. Are we able to make partnerships so that we can have a better um, social media presence? Because that's how a lot of these parents are operating. Things come right to their phone and then, okay, I forgot about that, so now I'll attend. Um, I think that those are, are some ways. I also think that taking advantage of large uh, opportunities, um, large events rather, that are, are being held. You've got football games. You've got everyone in one place, and, and they can't leave. You've got them trapped. So how you can um, market to them and tell them this is what but this is what's going on. Please, we'd love for you to be involved. Um, those are some of the things that, um, th that, that I see when it comes to community involvement and really focusing on it, making sure that it is a priority. This has to be your passion. Public service is my passion. Um, you know, we, I put on a uh, event called Pints in Politics, trying to bring out young people to get involved in, their, in politics and the importance of it and what does that look like, explaining what it means. And we had, a, you know, we had for our first run, we had almost 10 people present. That was 10 people more. You know, so I think that those are some ways that we can certainly increase community involvement. Ms. Moore, same question to you as well. Okay. Well, I think that um, 
we need a common place. Um, and, you know, of course, we have out, uh, outdoor facilities. Our parks are wonderful. Um, and so we looked at that because we did a survey um, for our residents um, asking what they wanted from the city council, what they wanted from being a resident of the city of Forest Park. Um, and we had a community day. So I think that was the first step in bringing the community back together. We used to have them in the past, so this year was the first year we've had it in a while. So I think that was a starting point, um, bringing the community together for a fun, uh, interactive, um, we had booths, and um, and that was put on by the Park and Recreation. So we are seeing that, and we do recognize that we need to connect families, connect individuals, because we have families, individuals who live in, in Forest Park as well. So we need to figure out um, how we can do that. And um, just making sure that we put information out that um, residents are receiving that information. Okay. We are about halfway through this portion of our discussion here for for. Forest Park City Council. If you are joining us on September 27th, please be a part of the action, 825-3971 or live at waycross.org. All questions will be answered tonight. Going ahead, Ms. Moore, our, our next question, really kind of building off of what we're just talking about, getting people involved, mm -hmm. working with people, working collaboratively with others. Mm -hmm. Joint partnerships are something that we've been doing for a number of years now think, due to the changing political views from many years ago. Is this something that needs to continue on Forest Park City Council? And if so, how will you perpetuate that? Uh, yes. Um, we have great partnerships with our local restaurants. Um, we are, have events at Frisch's. Um, we have um, uh, uh, Easter Bunny, um, breakfast with the Easter Bunny, breakfast with Santa. Um, so that's a partnership. We have a partnership with our local um, uh, grocery stores, Kroger's and um, Walmart. Um, our fire department just did a huge relief uh, effort um, um, this past week. So we do have those partnerships. And we also have a partnership with the school district. Um, we, use, uh, we, we have joint facilities that we use. And also we support their programs. Um, and so... Um, and businesses, local businesses, um, every, um, um, we often have um, employee business of the month, so we recognize that our businesses are vital to our community and we want to recognize that. And so I think that's how we um, connect. Wonderful. Ms. Nuss, same question to you. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Absolutely. Uh, it is definitely in regards to community partnerships, something sure. that we have uh, seen a lot of. Is it something that we need to continue? And if so, how will you perpetuate this joint venture? Uh, yes, absolutely. I mean, to be a 21st century uh, city, and as our slogan says, position for progress, it is absolutely vital that we create partnerships throughout Hamilton County, not just here. Um, you never know when you'll be able to lean on someone or to be able to share resources. Uh, and so that's uh, something that I've done uh, substantially. Uh, I am a, uh, one of the board members on the educational uh, committee for the NAACP, and there's a lot of uh, things that we have to talk about that quite frankly, can, can be of, of service and need uh, here in, in Forest Park. Uh, I attended uh, a couple months ago a Southwest Ohio First Consortium meeting, and I was a little disappointed that I, I was the only Forest Park resident, um, or uh, fo uh, I'm sorry, person there. Um, actually, we did have a council member there, Regina um, Collins, and one other candidate, but we were not on a list as Forest Park part of that consortium and there's valuable information. You're meeting a lot of people when you're talking about uh, economic sustainability measures and um, expanding and development and things like that. It's good to know people. Um, know people in those different areas. Uh, I'm a board director for the Environmental Awareness uh, Board uh, for Forest Park, and we have a great partnership with people working cooperatively. Uh, I'm actually the one charged uh, with working with the high schoolers that need community service hours and help having them get involved with what we're doing to help our residents. So I certainly think that working collaboratively uh, is, is, like I said, vital to, to our future. Uh, I think that I've done an excellent job of that in my public service for my business uh, and, and actually for the community as a public servant. And so we actually need to do more. It's important that we are very visible. Unfortunately, Forest Park gets swooped up in the whole Hamilton County, greater Cincinnati thing. It is important that we get to shine. We are a beacon on a hill, and it's, we deserve to have our time. Wonderful. Um, Ms. Nuss, um, this is going to come to you. Oh, 
You can have a drink of water while I ask a question, <laughs> clearly. The question being, uh, obviously, we, you s are sensing, and we all sense, that there's going to always be something big out there. It's going to be, there's something big to tackle. You being a, a possible new council member and Ms. Moore being a current council member, what do you feel is the two main projects that are going to be the big, big hurdles, the big things that you want to tackle once this new term begins? And Ms. Nuss, we'll start with you. Um, the pr our primary issue, uh, like, like I said, I'm the vice chairman for the Economic Development Commission here in Forest Park. And one of the things that we're seeing uh, is, is our retail spaces not being sold. So how we are able to bring up uh, Northland, uh, the Northland Towers area, uh, you have Carillon, and then we certainly have uh, the unfortunate incident with the uh, mall mm -hmm. situation, um, which is now up for sale. But we have we are going to have to uh, have a sense of urgency and be very proactive in how we're going to attract these businesses. We have a really, really, really great um, plan, to, to be honest. We were able to, um, we saw a $15 million reinvestment here in Forest Park amongst our businesses. We are able to keep a lot of them. Um, unfortunately, some of the ones that we, we are not able to keep is simply because we're land prohibitive. Mm -hmm. We just don't have enough land land. Um, but for the ones that we are, it has been really great. We work very closely with them, and we're going to continue to do that. Um, so we've got... Um We've got a number of different uh, residential areas that, that also need some sprucing up and beefing up, and that's where your partnerships in the, the many committees and volunteer organizations uh, come into play. How we find um, funding and how we um, you know, go into some of these partnerships for some of these spaces that have not yet been sold is going to be a major factor. Um, and that's why I was talking so much about building those partnerships and being collaborative and working with the people that, that we have in place and then building new partnerships, how we're going to find funding. Um, I'm a consultant. Um, I'm a STEM science, technology, engineering, math consultant for a CPS school, and we've got to find funding. Um, I've, I've been able to write grants and um, come up with creative ways and how we leverage our resources in order to get what we need to get done. And that same thing is going to have to happen. That's number one. Uh, I would say that number two, uh, oh, and I'm sorry, also in attracting certain um, businesses, but number two is going to be the quality of life. It's going to be what are we going to do for our children in the community space. Right. Ms. Moore, same question to you. Um, I think the first one is economic development. Uh, we do have great businesses in the city of Forest Park, and so we need to sustain them. But part of sustaining them is making sure they thrive as well in our community. Also enticing new businesses to come to the city of Forest Park. Forest Park is 23 minutes from pretty much everywhere in the tri-state, so it's perfect location uh, for new businesses to come in to um, um, set up home and create job opportunities for our, our residents. Um, my second um, one is quality of life. Uh, as, as I stated earlier, I'm a registered nurse, a public health nurse, uh, and I believe in public service and quality of life is very important to me and I've been very active on the We Thrive Committee um, to put that information out there for our residents um, and um, we've uh, like I said earlier we wrote for grants and um, we actually started a um, a healthy eating program at the fire department um, and that's a partnership with our harvest and so we're trying to in introduce healthier food choices for our residents of Forest Park. Um, so and that all goes with quality of health, um, safe neighborhoods um, and so I, I'm very, um, very, very passionate about quality of life. Excellent. Ms. Moore, the next question, we'll start with you and you tackled it. It was one of your first big chores, I guess you could say, or big tackles or hurdles to go through would be economic development. Mm -hmm. so you have already mentioned the city of Forest Park is positioned for the right things mm -hmm. at the right time. But what do you feel is our, our stumbling block mm -hmm. as to why we are not thriving economically? Why are our corridors that are specifically set for this are not thriving the way we would like them to be? Well, you know? I think we need to think outside the box. Um, in order to get new businesses to Forest Park, we have to 
invite them to Forest Park and keep and invite them to Forest Park. So possibly setting up like incubation type uh, programs where we're teaching how to start your business. Um, we're setting up um, resources to help and, and facilitate incentives for um, businesses to come to Forest Park. And so I think that that is a start to um, showcase our community, um, to let them know that this is a great place to start a business. This is a great place for small businesses, large businesses. Um, for the residents of our uh, Forest Park. Ms. Nuss, same to you. Uh, yes. Uh, as I've mentioned, um, as a commissioner for the EDC, uh, we, we do have a revitalization plan. And, um, and so, of course, it'll take, like I said, some fresh perspective, new ideas, being innovative in order to um, see its full glory. Um, but we had $15 million, um, as I said, reinvested back in, in Forest Park, and they did not have to stay. They stayed because Forest Park is a great place to have a family. It's a great family-oriented uh, place. It's close to 275, and they, they receive certain benefits from us. There are tax incentives that um, we are more than happy to um, to uh, provide for a business. And we also saw 500 jobs retained. 200 jobs were created last year. Uh, my concern is how, so when we are creating those jobs, Forest Park needs to get first dibs. <laughs> Our residents need to get first dibs and first shots at those companies and make, and that should be very clear um, from, from, as my dad would say, Jump Street when they come into the door. So, yes, that package and how they're, um, how we are marketing our, um, our um, space uh, for businesses is going to mean something. And so I, uh, one thing that I'm looking to do is to bring um, skills training. Uh, we have capacity right now in Forest Park to be able to have local skills training um, here. We've got a heavy manufacturing industry. Um, we are seeking medical technology and um, medical technology and um, engineering companies. Uh, and I'm looking to also, you know, beef up the um, sustainable technology. Uh, that, that's new. That's something new. You've got GE, and so what we're looking at is how can we get some sort of aviation, um, some funding, and have um, and, and also be kind of part of that, that corridor and the things that they have going. That's a very important thing. So um, having large-scale, not large-scale events, but um, invite, invite days. Uh, and also building those community partnerships throughout Hamilton County. That's what helps you tell other people that, hey, we have a lot to offer, and because you've seen me, you need to come and be a part of it. Great. Going to the last few questions here of the evening, we're going to go with the, as I like to say, the good and the bad. We're going to start with the, with the bad par portion of it, because we gotta, I want to rip the Band-Aid off first, and then we're going to look pretty afterwards, and you'll understand what I mean here in a minute. We've seen a number of... I don't want to call them blighted properties within our, our city, but we are starting to see a little bit of a, a downturn in a, in a lot of property. How can you, as a part of council, help in that improvement of property maintenance? And then that will be the second part of the question, but I do want to start with, I believe we are going to, I knew this was going to happen when, at one point. I had all these written down. Um, I believe with Ms. Okay. Ms. Moore, no, you started last year. I just finished. Talking. You just finished. So that means you will start. First. You will start. I, I start now. <laughs> this is what happens when you have live television. <laughs> Miss Nuss, okay. one, that's, that's two okay. minutes for you. Um, yes, this is certainly an, an issue, uh, and also part of um, the issues uh, underneath quality of life that we are concerned about tackling um, once I become a councilwoman. But yes, so you've got, um, like I said, the Environmental Awareness um, Board has done a pretty good job of building that partnership with people working cooperatively. So some of the things that, um, some of the, the properties that do need some help and some support, we're offering, uh, you know, a rebate. So they only have to pay half the cost of what it normally would cost um, in order to get certain repairs done. We are going to have to, ex um, to, to beef that up. Uh, once again, that is a sense, that there t takes... Um, I'm sorry, it, it, there's a sense of urgency that has to happen for that. Um, we are also recipients of a number of, of families that have moved from Cincinnati area. That's, you know, with their revitalization efforts, they, there's been a, a somewhat of an exodus, and so we're seeing a lot more renters, and that's fine. But if you have uh, corporations that, that own these properties that are not enjoying the benefits of community, then how, much, how well vested are they in making sure that that property is maintained? And that has been some of the issue. Uh, and so it does note, 
it does very little good to, as they say, collect the data. I'm a data-driven person, quantitative uh, specifically. It does no good for me to collect the data and then not execute on the data. So what I mean by that is if, if your grass is six inches is seven inches and you know that it's six inches we know as a city we have to give you a slap on the wrist um, we have to make sure that we follow up because that that creates a whole that creates a ripple effect in how people view our city um, I noticed that in the main drag um, from Winton coming off of 275 some of the business property isn't maintained well they're a business. It should be maintained well. We have a beautiful city, and people should see that right from the get-go. Ms. Moore, to you as well. Okay. Um, we definitely have a beautiful city. Forest Park is a beautiful place to live. Um, and when I was uh, meeting with the residents um, and speaking with the residents in their homes, that was one of their main concerns is the blight of uh, the, uh, several homes in the, in the community. And so um, I do agree that we need to start enforcing some of our ordinances regarding um, property maintenance. Um, and so um, definitely that's a way to kind of implement and kind of solve that particular problem. All right. Now as I'm going to the second part of this, Ms. Moore, you'll be starting with okay. this. Let's beautify. Let's mm -hmm. go back to that. Let's make for let's reforest Forest Park as we've been told. Let's keep it green here in mm -hmm. the city. How can we continue to make that thrive? Obviously, we need to start with trying to make what's bad good. Mm -hmm. Now, how do we maintain what is good even better? Well, we have several programs in the city of Forest Park. We have a tree program where residents can purchase trees from um, uh, the city um, uh, programs. And also we have a beautification committee where um, every year um, we have, we award um, residents beautification awards for maintaining their property. Um, also our parks and recs are one of the nicest parks and recs throughout the uh, Hamilton County. Um, we maintain our uh, equipment. Like I said, we just purchased uh, new equipment. We're going to purchase new equipment for Central Park. Um, of course, um, part of We Thrive, we just purchase fitness equipment for older adults. And so um, we maintain our soccer fields. And so basically that's part of keeping Forest Park beautiful. And um, so I, I think that's um, one way to do that. All right. Ms. Nuss, to you as well. Uh, yes, we do have a uh, we have a great uh, ref it's called reforesting forest park uh, where residents can get trees uh, and then and then plant them because we've had a lot of ash uh, bore ash uh, problems and a lot of the trees have been dying. Um, but one way is is simply bringing businesses and bringing events and bringing money income um, I'm sorry revenue to our city. That goes a long way. Um, we have we are sitting financially very, very well. We are a very stable and fiscally responsible city. Uh, and I think that go, that speaks volumes, but all we, we just need more money. <laughs> so uh, Greater Cincinnati loves their festivals. I would like to see a couple festivals here that are annual that we can build upon because we do have great, um, great access to nature um, here. And we've got some very good things to be proud of. So when you start to bring more people and you start to build those partnerships and collaborations, you start to see um, where those dollars can then be used um, to help beautify the city, to help repair sidewalks, to help um, even properties and help families that um, perhaps can't quite afford um, to repair things. So uh, one of the things I do in my company, uh, we have a heavy emphasis on agriculture, uh, specifically agricultural science. And so Ham Hamilton County Fairgrounds, um, they've, they've partnered with us. And what I found is that there are so many uh, grants and funding opportunities for outdoor spaces um, to educate uh, our families. Um, I teach a... Um, a container gardening class using uh, yeah. science agriculture, uh, and so we have to go about we have to go about uh, getting and applying for those things so that we can, like I said, bring money um, back to this city so that because it will be used well. All right. Well, we have reached the bottom of our time, so that means it is time for a closing statement. It just so happens that we will be going in reverse order, and we'll be starting with Miss Nuss for a one-minute closing statement. 
Uh, first of all, it's been, it's such an honor to uh, to be here, and some of the relationships I've built uh, over the years here in this community are just tr truly spectacular. Uh, I want to continue to build on the great foundation we have, uh, learning from our mentors uh, how well that um, how well they've been able to lead this city is really amazing um, but it only takes it will only work um, once we you know when we work together work collaboratively collaboratively with them uh, you also have to have a passion a passion for public service and wanting to you know um, execute the will of the people making sure that our government is responsive to the needs of the people we've got to listen that is what I'm promising as a city council uh, a city councilwoman uh, also meeting making sure that quality of life can community involvement happens uh, and economic sustainability uh, development that's those things are all very important I think I've exercised um, good judgment in those areas and that is why I should be the next city council uh, city councilwoman my name is Chelsea Nuss and I'd like your vote on November 7th Miss Moore round us out please okay well, I am excited. I um, want to be a resident of the city of Forest Park, and I've been very active in volunteering um, in various capacities to serve the residents of um, Forest Park. And um, these are exciting times. We're growing, and hopefully um, we are trying to be progressive with the change of time, and we are um, looking at quality of life. As I said, I'm very passionate about um, health and wellness and because when you have healthy families you have healthy communities you have healthy schools and i i've been very active in ensuring that we are starting that process and being progressive and thriving and reviving um the city of forest park so please vote for me rosalind moore on november 7th thank you thank you i want to thank you both for joining us this evening and of course i want to thank all of you as well We've done our portion here, and it is now your turn. You've gotten the information from those who are a part of the candidacy, and you can take that information and move it forward for the November 7th election. The early, uh, early voting does begin October 11th, so please take advantage of that if that is something of importance to you. You can gain more information in regards to this race and all the others by watching our Waycross election forums, as well as going to boe.hamilton-co.org. That is the Board of, Board of Elections website. There you can get all the information and current polling instances for you, the voting audience at home. Remember, November 7th, the polls do open at 6.30 a.m., so make sure that you are there. And take the information that you've gained, do the responsible thing, and remember to vote November 7th. Waycross takes no position on candidates or issues. Go. We conduct you can these go. forums so that our viewers may be better informed voters for the November 7th election.